Now that you know how to create a sketch, now we're going to create a feature. Now remember, we talked about features being adding or removing material. If you click on your Feature tab, it will show all of the feature tools available. Now again, these are context sensitive, so they only highlight ones that are available for you to use based on your geometry that you have in your model. But there's going to be four different ones that we're going to talk about. Extruded Boss Base, Extruded Cut, Revolve Boss Base, and Fillet. So first, let's talk about our Extruded Boss Base. Well, remember, to create a feature, we need to start with a sketch. So I am going to go in and I'm going to create a sketch off of my top plane. Click on my sketch. I'm just going to make a rectangle. Now one of the things I will note at this point is when you do create a sketch, you want it to be attached to the origin in some way here. Either you want a dimension to it, or the easiest thing to do is always start with one of your points on the origin. There are some advanced techniques in how you want to use that origin for later operations. We're not going to go into that with this video, but just know, start with one of your points on the origin when you start creating your, your sketch. So in this case, I'm going to start with one of my corners being on my origin. I'm going to come up, I'm going to hit escape. I want to dimension this, so I'm going to do smart dimension uh, width. I'm going to make that three inches. I'm going to dimension the height. I'm going to click here, click there. I'm going to make that two inches. Now we've got our sketch. It's fully defined. It's dimensioned. I'm going to click on exit my sketch. I've exited the sketch. I'm going to click on my features. And now I can create my feature. First one I'm going to start with, extruded boss base. So in this case, first thing I want to do is I want to highlight the sketch in my feature manager. The easiest way to do it is use your feature manager, click on your sketch there, highlight it. Now we can go up to do extruded boss base. Now once you click on that, the view is going to rotate a little bit. We're going to have our properties panel for our boss extrude on the left hand side. We're going to need all of this information. There's going to be some information that we need to put in over here. A couple things with the extrude boss base. If we look on the, the left hand side here, it says from sketch plane. Most of the time you're going to be extruding from the sketch plane. And in this case, you'll use that by default. Know that there are some other options here. They're more advanced uh, than what we're going to get into at this point. So we're always going to sketch or extrude from sketch plane. Next is direction one. So this is the direction we want to extrude. Think of this as we're going to add material in this direction. In this case, it says blind. Blind is the default. Blind indicates that we can type in a dimension and it'll go that far. So if we wanted a tenth of an inch, if we wanted three inches, whatever we want, we can put in a blind dimension. If we look at some of the other options, there's a few different other options there. For the most part, you will be using the blind feature. You can type in the dimension that you wanted to extrude. And where we go to extrude is right down here, this D, this dimension. That's the depth that we wanted to go. So if I wanted to go three inches, I can type in three, enter, and I'm going to use my scroll wheel to scroll in and out here. And I can see that it's changed on the screen. The other thing is if I don't know what that dimension should be, or I want it to be, is I can actually click on this little arrow, the head of that arrow, and I can actually drag that up and down. So I can see, I might be like, okay, I don't know what the exact dimension is, but that looks about where I want it to be. I'm going to leave it there. So you can visually change it. Uh, you can always change this dimension later on because it's parametric. So you can get it to look the way you want it to look, and then later on, tweak the final dimensions. Or you can type in the final dimension here. Couple things here. Direction two is another feature. We're not going to talk about it here, but we can extrude in the other direction, a second direction also. Thin features, selected contours, again, advanced features. We're not going to discuss that in here. All we're going to have you guys, I want you to understand is using direction one, blind, adding the dimension in here. Once we have it all set, then we can click on our green checkbox, accept it. There's our three-dimensional part. On my view tools up here, 
my heads up view is I can rotate view. So I click on that. Now I can click on my part and actually rotate it around and I can look at it. I can also pan so I can click on this and I can move it around. And then with the scroll wheel, we can use our scroll wheel to zoom in and out. When you're scrolling in, it will always use the cursor location as a fixed location. So if I come over off of my part my, and I zoom in, my part will go away. So the easiest thing to do is always put your cursor right where you want to zoom in. And then you may need to move that. So if I want to zoom in and look right at this corner, put my cursor right on that corner and I can zoom in real tight right on that corner. So now I'm going to zoom back out. So those are a few things that you can do with the heads up display. The other th other one that we'll look at is this view orientation. Click on the down arrow there. We can look at the front view. We can look at the top view. We can look at the isometric view. Just like that. Those are ways that we can get the standard views. Just a point, if you hit the space bar, you'll get a shortcut to that. So you don't have to click up there. You can just press space bar and that menu will come up so you can you can flip right to it. We're going to talk about our second type of feature. And that feature is going to be an extruded cut right here. So first thing I need to do to create a feature is we need to create a sketch. And I need to say, okay, I'm going to put on this face, I'm going to put a circle and I'm going to cut a hole all the way through it. So I want to sketch on that face. I don't need to pick one of these other planes. I can, but in this case, I want to sketch right on this face. So I'm going to click on that face. It's going to highlight that face in blue. It's going to show some of the other dimensions. Don't worry about those other dimensions. All we want to see is that that surface is highlighted in blue. Then we can go to sketch and we're going to sketch on that surface. You can hit the space bar, click on normal two, and now my screen rotates around. In this case, I'm going to take a circle. I'm going to put that on the screen here, say that's about the right size. I'm going to escape to deselect it. I'm going to dimension this and I'm going to say I want this dim that circle to be 0.75 inches in diameter. And I can tell it's the diameter because of the diameter symbol here. Sometimes you'll see an R for radius or you'll see the diameter. So uh, just make sure you watch that when you're dimensioning circles. The other thing I'm going to add is I want to dimension this thing so it's it's an inch and a half from this front face. So I'm going to click with my smart dimension still selected. I'm going to select the center of my circle and I'm going to go all the way to this edge. And I'm going to say I want that to be uh, I want that to be one point two five inches. And then also I want to go from this top surface down to the center of my circle. I want that to have a dimension of 0.75. Now I've located my circle on that face. Now if we look at it, the circle is now turned black. It is no longer blue. It is fully dimensioned. I have the location of the circle defined. I have the dimension or the radius or diameter of the circle defined also. So now I can hit escape. That will exit us out of the smart dimension tool. It will deselect everything on the screen. Now I'm going to exit my sketch. If I take a look on the in our feature manager, I have a sketch down here and it is highlighted. So I'm going to create a feature. So the second feature that we're going to talk about is extruded cut. And I am going to rotate this around so we can see it a little bit better. Actually, I'm going to create this in an isometric view so you can see this. We have our sketch selected. I'm going to click on extruded cut. And now it's going to start to cut this. Now, extruded cut looks very similar to extrude boss base. We have our sketch from sketch plane. So we're going to go from the sketch plane. We have a blind dimen uh, dimension and we can actually put the dimension in here. Now, if we want to go all the way through this part, you can see it's showing that this is not going to extrude all the way through this part. I want it to go all the way through this part. Well, I could remember that this is 
a three inches wide. I could type that dimension in. But if I did that, if I change the width of my part in the future, the depth of this cut will not change. So there is one other setting that I want you guys to know about. This blind, we're going to go from blind to through all. And what that's going to do is now you can see my dimension has completely gone away. What it's going to do is it's going to cut through all of the material of this part. So if I change the dimension later on, it will continue to cut all the way through it. So in this case, I'm going to rotate this guy back around. And I'm going to say, OK. Now, rotate that. You can see my hole goes all the way through it. I'm going to rotate this up so we can see it. Hit Escape, deselect that tool, click on the box. You can see I've got my 3 inches width. I'm going to modify that to make it 4 inches. And I'm going to just click OK on my dimension there. If you notice, my box didn't visually change on the screen. I changed the dimension, but the computer is still not, it hasn't updated it. I need to tell it, update my part or rebuild my part. So up at the top of the screen, there's a little stop, stop light, red and green light. It's a rebuild. Click on the rebuild. It goes through and reconstructs your part. In this case, I can rotate this around. You can still see my hole goes all the way through my part because I gave it the through all. The next feature I'd like to talk about is the revolved boss base. This we're going to add material, but we're going to revolve it about an axis. Next, I'm going to create a sketch for the revolved boss base. I'm going to select my front plane, go up to sketch, sketch, it rotates around. Now I'm going to draw a box here. And I'm going to draw this box right over here. Basically, I'm going to make a washer. Big flat disc washer. So there's my box. And I'm going to dimension this. So I'm going to dimension the top here. And I'm going to make that one inch. And I'm going to measure the height here. And I'm going to make that a tenth of an inch. Like that. I'm going to scroll in a little bit. Now, to use our Revolve Boss Base, we need to add one other component to it. We need to be able to identify not only the cross-section, but we need to identify the axis of rotation. And the way that we add our axis of rotation, just hitting Escape here, is that we're going to go up, and we need to add a center line. So we're going to click on the down arrow at the line, and click on the center line command. And I'm going to make my center line right here. Again, I only need one center line, so I'm going to hit Escape to exit that tool. Now, the one thing that we need to put on here is a dimension. What is this inner radius going to be? So I can go from this line to this edge, and there's going to be my inner radius. Now, if I come over to the outside, SolidWorks is smart enough to know that that's going to be a center line. So we can actually add the di diameter in here, or we can add the radius, whichever we would like to do. So in this case, I'm going to add the radius, make it 2. Now you can see I've got my geometry defined. My sketch is still blue, saying it's not fully defined yet. There's, I'm still missing something. This is where it can sometimes get a little frustrating. I think I've got everything defined. What's not defined? Well, sometimes to help figure out what's not defined is we can click on our click and hold on our part and we can try moving it. The direction that it'll move is our undefined area or our undefined direction. So in this case, this can still move up and down. And it can move up and down relative to our origin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a relationship here, a collinear relationship between this line. And actually, you can see, since I had my lower line selected, it automatically put this in here. And I'm going to just click on my origin. And it's going to put 0.5 right here. And I'm going to make those, uh, in this case, a coincident. So they're going to be in line or right on top of each other. So with those, I can say OK. If I hit Escape here, you can see my geometry is fully defined 
Now, I don't need to make my geometry fully defined. I could exit out. If I can't figure it out, I can always exit out and make sure it looks okay. But if you can make it fully defined, it just helps you out in the future because as you make modifications, if it's not fully defined, things might start changing that you don't expect to be changing. But in this case, I've got my cross section, I've got everything all set. So I'm going to exit my sketch. And now I'm going to click over to my features. And I want a revolve boss base. So I make sure I have my sketch highlighted. Revolve boss base. Now the nice thing about this is that SolidWorks is smart enough to say, okay, revolve boss base, you have a center line, you've defined that. It's it's put it in here automatically. Now what we can do here is for direction one, this is talking about the rotation. So a blind rotation, we're going to type in the number of degrees we want this to rotate all the way around. You can see it makes a full circle, 360 degrees. That may be what I want, but I could say 180 degrees in here and it'd only be half of that. So depending on what you want for your part, you can modify it here. And again, I want 360 degrees, hit enter. It's going to modify it on the screen. It still hasn't accepted it. I need to click on the green check mark or the OK button to create that feature. And there's our feature. I can hit escape to deselect our geometry. And there it is. Next, I want to talk about a fillet. The fillet adds a round. We talked about a sketch fillet in our sketch section. But this is actually a three-dimensional feature. Let's say on this, I want to add a radius edge or a rounded edge. I'm going to use this fillet. So without anything selected, if I hit escape, I deselect everything, and I click on the fillet feature, there's going to be a couple things that we need to tell it. The fillet type, we're just going to say it's a constant radius fillet dimension. So I made this 0.1 inches thick, so I might only want to radius this 0.05 inches. Hit enter. Now down here, this blue box is the edge that I want to fill it. So in this case, I'm going to click on this top edge. And you can see, and I'm going to scroll and zoom in on this. It actually adds a preview. If this full preview button is checked, you'll see it in yellow. If you don't, if you have partial preview or no preview, you might not see or you won't see that yellow. I can also click on this inside surface and it'll radius that or fill it that surface too. And I can say, okay. Now you can see I have this outer surface and this inner edge now radiused or fill 